of mass is pretty much exactly what it sounds like. Uh, it's just the average position of of the mass of whatever's in question. Uh, the center of mass of a person is just kind of you know the the average position of all their mass. Uh, women's center of masses tend to be a little bit lower than than guys because guys tend to have uh, you know guys tend to have broad shoulders and a relatively narrow waist <laughs> and girls tend to be a little bit lower because they have hips uh, so their mass is concentrated lower down than a guy's who has you know we have a lot more mass up in our uh, shoulder area um, <clears throat> and we kind of instinctively know how to center our mass if you uh, you know, if you go to uh, this is my beautiful artwork here, when when we stand on one foot, you know, like kick our leg up to stand. On, that's a terrible drawing of a leg. Whatever. <laughs> when we go up to stand on one foot, we kind of instinctively tilt our body uh, because in order to balance, we'll talk more about this uh, when we talk about torque. Uh, but for now, just. To, when you balance, your center of mass is above the needs to be above the base. In this case, your foot. Uh, you kind of instinctively lean to the side, um, and you know your center of mass moves around depending on the position of your body. Like if you raise your arms, now you have more mass up higher. Your center of mass right goes up. If you, you know, squat down. And your center of mass goes down; it lowers, right? Um, and since this is an average position, center of mass may be outside an object. Uh, for example, my slinky here. Uh, its center of mass is, you know, in the center of this ring. It's not actually part of the object. Uh, and if I contort my slinky into this sort of U shape. Let me zoom out a little bit. <laughs> if I contort my slinky into this U shape, now its center of mass could be like even in here where my middle finger is that I'm twitching, uh, which isn't inside the you know, isn't even inside the object. Uh, if a person like here we're gonna go stick figure, if you like are uh if you bend yourself over into like the the bear walk, you know, with your legs and arms straight, and if you, well, maybe more like this, if you hang your head down, your center of mass might be over here outside of your your body. Um, yeah, so the the center of mass doesn't have to be inside the object because it is just that average uh, position. Um, one interesting thing we we haven't really talked about it specifically, but when we did kinematics. Uh, and in talking about how an object moves according to the kinematic equations, we were always talking about the center of mass uh, of the object. Uh, an individual point on the object may not be moving quite that way because it could be rotating or, or whatever, but the center of mass of the object follows uh, kinematic equations. Uh, so one sort of interesting uh, aspect of this is has, uh, related to... Uh, one of one of my favorite athletes to watch, uh, Michael Jordan, arguably the best basketball player ever. I'm from Chicago, so I tend to support that he is the best basketball player ever. But you know, people make arguments about about that. Anyway, <laughs> uh, but when he would jump, uh, you know, other players and you know fans just watching him, he would seem to hang in the air. Like he would jump and he'd be up there, and then uh, like the the players, the other players would look like they were f coming to the ground faster, and he was just kind of staying up there. Um, now we, we we should know from physics that that's more or less impossible. You can't just float in the air. But what he would do is when he would first jump, you know, he'd be like running in some direction or whatever, and then when he would first jump, he would kind of 
have his legs like tucked in. And he'd have them, you know, he got the ball here. <laughs> he'd have his legs tucked up under him, and then as he would move forward, he would let his legs fall, and then so they'd be more straight down. So like his head and hands, his center of mass was up higher here, and then it was down lower here. So his center of mass was, was you know, moving according to the, the kinematic equations we know. But his head and arms would stay at close to the same level for a longer period of time than you would expect uh, because of the way he tucked his legs when he first jumped and then would let them hang down as, as he went along. That was kind of a, an interesting uh, thing there. So the center of mass is still following kinematic equations, but he would appear to be hanging in the air because his upper body wasn't really moving downward uh, as much. <coughs> anyway. Uh, so the center of mass, we've got an equation for center of mass. And as I said, it's just the average position of all of your masses. So you have mass 1 times its position plus mass 2 times its position plus, you know, and you could have as many masses as you want. Uh, so the position of the center of mass is just this quantity right here. Um, if you're looking at a, a body, this becomes an... Well, it becomes an integral. It's a calculus thing. Uh, we won't do it. We will only find center of mass uh, of discrete collections of objects. So, like, we might have an object here and an object here and an object here, and we'll calculate their center of mass using this formula. Uh, and you can do this, like, you could write the y position of the center of mass as the e position of the center of mass. So you could do this for an arbitrary number uh, of dimensions. Uh, likewise, the velocity of the center of mass of a system is just the average velocity of all the pieces of the system. You just add up all this stuff. It's very similar, you know, because V average is delta x over t, right? So velocity of the center of mass would be delta x center of mass over t, and then we're taking all of these x's over t, which turns them into velocities. Um, interesting thing about the velocity of the center of mass formula is that this top part, m1, v1, plus m2, v2, etc., this looks an awful lot like the total momentum of a system. Okay, it looks an awful lot like it is the total momentum of the system. Uh, so this leads us to an interesting conclusion. The total momentum of the system is conserved in collisions, which means that the velocity of center of mass before a collision is equal to the velocity of center of mass after a collision because the mass of the system, the total momentum of the system doesn't change, and the mass of the system, of course, doesn't change. Uh, so like, you know, if you've got a ball moving toward another ball, and say this one's at rest, this one's moving, the center of mass is going to be halfway between them. And then, like, when the ball gets here, center of mass is, say they're the same size, you know, the center of mass is still going to be halfway between them. When they collide, it's going to be, like, right there in the middle. And then this one's going to move off, and, you know, and the center of mass is going to be moving over at a constant speed. Uh, so as long as there's no net external force, the velocity of the center of mass is constant. So if that sum of the force is zero, velocity of the center of mass is constant, even through uh, collisions and whatnot. So if I give you information about objects before a collision and ask you something about the center of mass after the collision, you can just find the velocity of the center of mass before the collision, and that's the same as the velocity of the center of mass uh, after a collision.